I am Mr. Raman Chopra, CFO and Executive Director, Finance. I shall now hand over the call to the management for the opening remarks. Over to you, gentlemen. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to GSA Learning Call for the second quarter and the half year ended September 30th, 2022. Our results and presentation have been uploaded on stock exchanges and complete website. For this call, I am accompanied by our CFO, Raman, along with Manu and Abhishek. Our Q2 results for the chemical business reflect strong demand and higher realization by 9% over Q1, thus absorbing higher input costs and resulting in better margins. The textile business continued to face headwinds, which resulted in lower profitability. I will now share our views on the global soda industry. Number one, long-term demand outlook is very healthy, barring some blip in near term. Demand shall reach to 78 to 83 million uh, metric ton by 2030, driven by newer segments such as solar glass, lithium, and sodium bicarbonate. Second, China will not be significant in global trade as it will focus on domestic market. Third, no significant supply will come up in next two, three years, barring some de bottlenecking. Fourth, new capacity addition will happen from natural soda mainly in US and Inner Mongolia. However, because of the supply chain scenario, synthetic soda will continue to grow as well. Currently, demand in China has softened due to real estate sector, resulting in higher export, and also freight costs have gone down significantly. However, barring China, demand is strong in the rest of the world. In India, demand from glass industry remains strong. Extended monsoon moderated demand from detergent segment. We shall recover going forward. Some temporary blip may happen in the short term due to higher energy prices and increased export from China. We conducted a planned maintenance at our soda unit in October, due to which our production will be impacted by around 15,000 metric ton in Q3 FY23. The textile business buoyancy from last few quarters has now started to taper down. Prices for both cotton and yarn has corrected from the peak and the spread uh, has uh, contracted. The business has remained positive traction after two, three quarters and our margin will revert back to 17 to 20% range. We are focusing on implementation of our uh, various growth initiatives. The Soda at Greenfield project is one step closer post com completion of environment related public hearings. Sodium bicarbonate expansion project is on track and shall be com completed in this quarter. Strategically, we are strengthening our raw metal integration with acquisition of limestone mines. Other initiatives, including digitization and product basket expansions, are progressing well. At our textile division, installation of 40,000 new spindles is in advanced stage, and we shall achieve full utilization by year, uh, end of this physical. We are further enhancing our green energy footprint by implementing an additional 5 megawatt solar foot, uh, rooftop project. On the demerger front, we have received approval from shareholders and unsecured creditors in August. Now we are awaiting order from Honorable NCLP, which may happen in December. For the benefit of our investors, I would like to draw your attention to the slide 14 to 18 in the investors' presentation, where, with the help of historical data, we have demonstrated the unique characteristics of soda and comparison with other chemicals. I will now hand over to Raman and request him to share the financial performance. Thank you. Over to Raman. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Good evening and a very warm welcome to all of you in our earning call. Uh, I am going to share the financial highlights and segmental performance for the quarter ended 30th September 2022. Our results demonstrate strong business fundamentals, especially supported by the inorganic uh, chemical business. Revenue for the quarter came in at 1,389 crore as compared to 805 crore in the corresponding quarter of last year. This is a growth of 73% on year-on-year basis and 1% on a sequential basis. A beta for the quarter stood at 442 crore, which has significantly increased by 159% from 171 crore from last year and by 3% from 429 crore from first quarter of this year. Our beta margin increased from 21.2% in Q2 of 
last year to 31.3 percent in Q1 of this year, and now further increased to 31.8 percent for Q2 of this year. Profit after tax for the quarter stood at 289 crore compared to 93 crore in Q2 of last year. That is an increase of 212 percent and rupees 345 crore in Q1. Let me now share the segmental uh, perspective in the inorganic chemical segment. The revenue came in at 1130 crore. This is higher by 98 percent compared to 572 crore in the corresponding quarter of last year and by 3 percent from Q1 of FI23. The beta for the quarter stood at 413 crore which translates to a beta margin of 36.6 percent. In absolute terms, the beta is up by 291 percent from Q2 of last year and by 13 percent from Q1 of two FI23. This strong performance is due to higher realization as well as strong planned operational performance. The textile business is facing severe headwinds. Revenue for the quarter stood at 260 crore as compared to 233 crore in the corresponding quarter of last year and rupees 275 crore in Q1 of FI23. A beta for the quarter stood at 29 crore compared to 65 crore in last year and also 65 crore in Q1 of this year. Hence the beta margin have now contracted to 11.3 percent for the current quarter. Uh, we believe that the unfavorable scenario may continue for half two of this year and we will revert back to a normalized margin of 17 to 20 percent in the next fiscal year. In half one we have generated a cash flow of uh, 930 crore. As of 30th September, our gross debt stood at 496 crore and net debt is around 230 crore rupees. This represents a net debt equity ratio of 0 0.06 times only. In shorter term, we are prudently utilizing our funds and in the longer term, we shall deploy the, the, these funds towards our growth initiative, including the Greenfield project. With this, I conclude my remarks and will now request the moderator to open the forum for question and answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have our first question from the line of Rohit Sinha from Sunidhi Security. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Uh, thank you for taking my question and congratulations for a good set of numbers. Uh, so my first question is uh, yeah, in terms of uh, the pricing scenario which is currently in favor of us. So how much uh, scope, what kind of scope we... Uh, hello. Hello. Talking on the behind yes. background. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it okay now? Uh, yes. Please. Yeah. Yeah. So, I uh, just wanted to understand what kind of scope is there uh, for further price hike in the soda segment, as we are already at the almost the highest level, uh, given the current uh, demand supply situation in the global market. Uh, if I can say, like I said in my opening remarks, uh, two scenarios. One, if you look at the long term, uh, we, are, uh, we, are, uh, we are looking at a very bright uh, uh, price scenario going forward. But short term, probably the prices will be remain softened. Maybe slightly some uh, blip may happen in, this, uh, in the soda ice pricing, uh, maybe in a quarter uh, because of the China real estate uh, is, is on the downward trend. So maybe could could uh, have a, some softening in the soda ice pricing. Okay, okay, uh, but on the... Uh, okay. I'm not saying it will be very big, but marginal got costs it. can happen. Got it, got it. And, and uh, with, the, with the kind of uh, capacity addition we already completed uh, a couple of quarter back, and uh, almost we are operating at almost 90% kind of utilization level. So, so just wanted to understand what kind of volume growth we should be targeting and uh, should expect for FY23. FY23, uh, next six months, uh, probably uh, maybe seasonality can have some impact. Uh, however, like I said, uh, in the third quarter, uh, because of the plants and down, 
there will be a uh, reduction in the volume by 15,000 ton. So balance, I think, uh, I think uh, we are not looking at a very major uh, volume growth uh, in next two quarters. Okay, okay. And uh, one question on the textile side, as uh, you have highlighted in uh, your last call also that there would be challenges uh, uh, in the textile side. Uh, uh, so uh, how uh, so how much you see uh, that has played in this quarter and maybe how much would be playing in the coming quarter? Uh, I mean, just wanted to understand that uh, H1, uh, I mean, H2 compared to H1, how we should be seeing? Uh, if I can say, Rohit, the uh, first quarter, this first six months, first quarter was good. The second quarter has seen the impact of uh, this meltdown. And uh, probably, the, like you have seen in the second quarter, probably that kind of a number, or maybe slightly uh, lower than that number, should be expected in the third quarter. But I think recovery will start in the fourth quarter itself. So probably I would say the third and fourth quarter, if I look at it in totality, probably you can see that number compared to the third, uh, second quarter of this uh, of this year. That's even uh, broadly, I'm just giving an uh, outlook of that. But there could be a significant recovery. This entirely depends on how the demand of our finish uh, means our customer finish products, particularly home textile or the garment segment, more particularly in the home textile, how the recovery happens, which is now at this point of the time in US, lot of inventory has got built up, which is getting clear now. Probably the people are expecting, our consumers in the home textile, they are, they are expecting this inventory clearances will happen in the next six months. Probably the new uh, uh, demand will start uh, coming in the uh, 23-24. Uh, so therefore, you will see the recovery in 23-24, significant recovery, if I can say. Okay, okay. And one last question, if I squeeze in, uh, I mean, uh, just wanted to know your thoughts on uh, uh, the newer chemistry or newer projects which we are looking at, you know, how the progress has been there and uh, what kind of uh, contribution we should be expecting uh, in coming years. I'm sorry, can you repeat your question? So, uh, uh, in terms of newer uh, chemistry or newer projects, which we are, uh, which any any new project which we are looking at uh, to, uh, to flourish in the coming uh, years, in terms of adding new chemistry or new products or different product range, maybe just to know uh, the growth. Uh, I mean, where we should be seeing the growth uh, coming from. Uh, in the next one year or two years, apart from this uh, soda ash thing? We are looking at uh, multiple uh, opportunity in the, in, the, in the growth initiative. One, as you know, that uh, we have said uh, about the Greenfield project. But of course, as you know, that uh, this may take uh, two, three years of time from now onwards. Uh, of course, sodium bicarbonate is another uh, expansion which is happening. And probably uh, the third opportunity which uh, we are evaluating. Uh, various uh, uh, opportunity of uh, maybe uh, merger and acquisition or uh, those kind of things also we are looking at. So probably you will see some kind of a, this kind of a feedback uh, once we have some something uh, which is concrete which we can speak on. Okay. But surely the management is very focused on the growth of the business. We are we are uh, continuously working on uh, on the growth uh, growth uh, uh, growth objective of our organization. Oh, okay. And that's it for my side. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Ritesh Gandhi from Discovery Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. And kind of congratulations on the numbers. Just a couple of questions. Sir, you know, and you indicated some amount of softening in prices of soda ash. Could you give an indication as to, I mean, how much have they already softened uh, 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 compared to the average of the Q2 level? No, uh, I, uh, till now there is no such kind of a uh, softening has happened. But we always believe that we give up, uh, our feeling of uh, next uh, few months. So probably till now, like I said, uh, till October, that kind of a softening has not happened in the domestic pricing. But it may happen some uh, going forward. So that's what we have indicated. Got it. So as of now, we are not seeing any of this. Opening, but but but, but we expect it to happen. 
Yeah. And Because of, like I said, China, the way we look at the China, we look at the China, and I, I'm again want to repeat it, China is more of a spot market. There, this kind of a, and maybe after 20 days or after 15 days or maybe after one month, the scenario may change in China. But at this point of time, because of the real estate uh, downward trend, uh, there could be some kind of a more volume getting uh, into into the Indian or, or the, this this part of the world. So probably that can put some some uh, pressure on the pricing. It's not going to be very significant, but some trip can happen. Got it. Got it. So if we expect it would be what you know, maybe like I mean, I mean one to two percent uh, uh, decrease, or it could be higher also. So like I said, now at this point of time, we are visualizing some uh, some softening, okay. But it can reverse in after one month also. We, it's very difficult at this point because if it would have been any other market other than uh, other than uh, China, I would have been able to predict it. But China is a very uncertain market. I remember that a few months back, the prices has all of a sudden from has gone up almost around 150 percent, and all of a sudden uh, some drop has happened. So this is a very a spot market where depending upon the inventory, depending upon, uh, they, uh, they try to sell some volume. Got it. Understood, sir. Uh, and on the spinning side, you know, we've got some extra, actually, the spindles also expected to uh, come on stream by Q3. So then if we add those spindles, would we then expect some amount of uh, 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 normalcy of the spread? Are they, I mean, historically low, and do we expect them to normalize in how long? See, two things uh, I would like to just uh, here highlight. This of uh, 40,000 spindles, the product which we are visualizing will have a, means our product market expansion will be, uh, will be very wide range. That will give you a much bigger uh, platform in the customers. And the customers which are at this point of the time not in our basket, premium customers, will be able to cater to their demand. However, at this point of the time, as you know probably, that all the textile mills, and particularly if I talk about the, uh, of the spinning mills, there are many spin mills are uh, kind of a, running at a very, very low capacity or they are not working on. We are still much better than the competition. But the challenge of margin for next, at least for this quarter, uh, third quarter, will be definitely going to uh, is going to be there, uh, because now the cotton prices are softening. But on the other side, even the demand of the yarn prices are also uh, on the lower side. So the spread has reduced. Right. But probably three, third quarter will definitely be uh, not better than the quarter which we have just gone. Uh, third quarter, uh, second. <laughs> Maybe fourth quarter could be better than uh, the th uh, better than uh, this quarter, depending upon how the recovery happens in the consuming industry, particularly home textile, and also uh, into the garment. Got it. Got it. So, and the last question is in terms of you indicated the you know December date for the demerger or the NCLT approval at least. Do we have a date or the NCLT date, or this is expected, or uh, you know, and any reason it is taking so long? Are, are they just held back in court or? See, uh, the date is 20th of December 2022, and this is primarily because of the, uh, the report from uh, ROC and RD. And RD has not been received by the by the court. Hopefully, we are pursuing personally now, and hopefully by this 20th December this should happen. And uh, this is what, and you know that NCLT at this point is flooded with a lot of uh, uh, cases, and uh, it, it is becoming an invariably uh, kind of a thing where uh, the things are getting uh, dragged. Uh, into the NCLT, but still we are trying with what 20th, 20th December at least it should happen. So the indication is that it's likely to happen by December? Yeah, that is what our target is. Understood. All right, so thank you and all the best. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Prerna Junjunwala from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, so just wanted to un uh, understand the textile segment performance. Uh, what was the mix of cotton yarn versus blended yarn in this quarter versus last quarter? See, that mix is always uh, is going to be the same because out of our total spindleage, almost around 40% of the spindleage are on the synthetic, and balance 60% uh, is on the on the uh, on the cotton side. So the mix is always going to be the same because we are producing 100%. 
Only what has happened is that the prices of yarn has gone down, and uh, and and you know, so cotton prices was in the last quarter, if I can say so, was on the peak. So some coverage of the cotton has happened in that period also. So because of that, this uh, you are, uh, what you are seeing at this point of the time, the percentage will not change quarter by quarter. And the utilization levels, um, how you are seeing in current scenario, which is. Uh, hmm. It's, it's yeah. Uh, your commentary suggested that there will be pain there in this quarter. No pain is in terms of the margin there, no? Not in terms of the utilization. Of course, there could be a few percentage of utilization could be here and there, but we are running the plant at the peak of 99 percent. Okay, okay. And so, uh, what is driving uh, this utilization? Which segments? Largely apparel no. or the home textile is seeing some traction or. Which segments are seeing? No, kind of, uh, in terms of uh, if you are talking about the production, the production, all the machines are running at the peak. Okay, when you are talking about the sales side, the drop in the sales is all the segments. Of course, more is in the home textile. Home textile situations are little more uh, ba bad than the garment, but still, I would say the garment is also not being great. And the weaving versus knitting. Knitting is also bad, but I would say weaving is slightly better as compared to knitting. Okay, so uh, how much inventory would you be carrying from uh, the previous season in this in this quarter Q3? Uh, finished goods inventory, if I would finished yes, goods uh, inventory, uh, probably will sorry raw material. Yeah. Raw material, Prerna, generally we cover the cotton for the season to season. I would say at the end of uh, September, probably we will, because it was the end of the season, almost the end of the season, you will not find much of the inventory into the uh, into the into the raw material, uh, barring some imported cotton. But now this inventory built up will happen in next uh, few months. Uh, by March, probably we will cover up to maybe up to uh, August, September, or October, depending upon how the pricing uh, pan out to be in the cotton. Uh, but this is what the practice is. And uh, sir, what is the uh, spread? How is the spread currently uh, as compared to Q2? That's what the Prisma said. That, that right now you are talking about the current month, almost at the same level what the spread was there in the Q2. Okay. Okay. Understood. Understood, sir. So this is helpful. Uh, I'll come back to the question queue. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Anika Mittal from Invest Research. Please go ahead. Hello. Good evening, sir. So, uh, my question is on are we seeing any upcoming demand traction from Europe due to energy crisis going on there uh, as the largest player in Europe, Solway of Soda Ash is curtailing its production now? So, are we seeing any demand from there? Demand from Europe to India? Yes, sir. See, uh, we, uh, uh, honestly, in, the, in this month, in the month of October, we had attended the conference of World Soda Conference. And the sense which we got is, yes, mm -hmm. uh, Europe is facing a challenge of the, uh, of the energy cost, and because of their cost of production has gone up. And mm -hmm. however, the demand of the uh, of uh, of the soda is also on the on, on the lower side. Likely chance of any other part of the world other than U.S. Uh, exporting to that country will be minimal. However, one advantage definitely will happen. They were exporting almost around million and half uh, from Europe to uh, to the other part of the world. Probably that will disappear. And that will helpful in a global demand supply situation. That will helpful. That's it, Commander. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Sakit Kapoor from Kapoor Company. Please go ahead. Namaskar, sir, and uh, thank you for this opportunity, sir. Sir. Firstly, sir, uh, congratulations for this improved uh, investor presentation. Uh, it, uh, totally revamped, and uh, th that gives us more uh, more clarity uh, of what the management understanding about the uh, two business dynamics are. So, uh, thank you for this improvement. Sir, firstly, if you could 
uh, give us uh, the data on how have the volume been for quarter two for soda as versus Q1 on a sequential basis. What was uh, the 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 change in the volume? Uh, in terms of the percentage, our uh, the production uh, was higher than the first quarter, and higher was the as compared to the first quarter. Of course, the sales was slightly on the lower side uh, big, uh, as compared to the first quarter. Primarily, in the sales was down. Primarily, as I said, uh, the present segment was uh, uh, what the demand was uh, was uh, on the lower side. So therefore. therefore some small uh, drop, or I would say, sale is lower than the first quarter. So, so then, what explains this increase in realization for us? Uh, if the volume sold was lesser than the June quarter, we we had uh, uh, on a sequential basis uh, uh, on uh, on 1091 crore, it was 1123, and the significant increase in profitability from 353 to 400. What explains then this uh, when the when the when the selling quantity was lesser than? Uh, in, on Q2 basis. No, second, uh, if you remember that our last call, as I have said, we have taken some price increase in the la in the first quarter. The benefit of that has also accrued to us in this quarter, number one, and uh, uh, and some of the fixed contracts, which we some of the contracts are on fixed contracts. There also the price negotiation has happened, and therefore overall realization has improved further. That overall realization improvement has helped. The whole higher the sales numbers, higher revenue numbers, and also the higher profitability. Correct, sir. So you did spoke about softening of uh, soda prices in the likelihood because of uh, the Chinese uh, factor. So, sir, as you have told earlier, that the prices there on uh, acts on a spot basis and have moved uh, haphazardly up and down. So, currently, what are the price trends in in, in dollar terms, sir, uh, for specific, specifically the China market, so that we can have an understanding what is the arbitrage currently between uh, their prices and uh, our domestic prices. See, if it, uh, Sakit, uh, I will not be able to give you the number of China because of primarily only because of one reason, because in China prices are varying from customer to customer and the location to location. So therefore, it's a very, uh, it numbers are on a spot basis and they're depending upon the customer, depending upon the seller, uh, they decide the price. So there is no fixed price kind of a scenario in the, in the Chinese market. But like you rightly said, uh, if, if prices uh, softening uh, does happen, probably some correction uh, in our pricing will happen. But like I indicated, that will not be significant. I'm repeating it. <clears throat> Only to get to it, sir, again, what kind of volume, sir, uh, are you expecting from China to flow to uh, in Indian market and also to, to markets in the vicinity because of the sudden reduction in freight costs? See, I don't see a very major uh, jump into the volume, but yes, some volume uh, increase will happen. How, how much that number will be is very difficult to kind of predict. But some increase in the volume will happen, and therefore uh, we as a uh, we as a as a producer, we have to take a cognizance of that, and as an investor, you should know that. Right, sir. So this 15,000 uh, reduction in production number for this quarter will be a temporary loss. We would be uh, making up for the same in in the play. In the coming quarter, is it a permanent loss uh, in terms of uh, vol the volume? Sakit, I can only tell you we will be producing uh, full to our capacity. Right, sir. and what kind of additional cost we will be incurring because of uh, the ramping up uh, exercise that happened uh, post the plant uh, shutdown? And, and have we taken the exercise completely? And are we running uh, or uh, we will, that will happen in the next month? No, that has already happened and uh, the plant has come back to the normal. Okay, and what should be the additional cost sir, incurred uh, because of this uh, plant shutdown? Very difficult at this point of the time. The numbers of uh, October has not yet been finalized. So very difficult uh, to give you the number. But historically, whatever the number has happened, that number will happen. Uh, very two small points, sir. Firstly, sir, so just to conclude what you spoke uh, earlier, that uh, these the, the margins which we have posted Q1, Q, uh, which the quarter two margins are slightly looking stoppage going ahead because of the changing uh, the likelihood of changing factors, especially from China entering this uh, soda space uh, going ahead. So for, for us uh, to maintain these uh, uh, these margins, especially on the inorganic chemical, 
uh, would, would be a uh, would be a challenge uh, going ahead. So this 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 understanding is correct in, uh, as of now. See, I'm not saying that uh, it's going to be a big challenge, but yes, like I said, uh, this kind of a blip, not today, this kind of a blip may happen in a longer term process. So some maybe one quarter could be slightly lower and then it may be recovered very, uh, very aggressively next quarter. So that kind of a blip, uh, Sakesh, you, uh, you have to, you, we have to always be prepared for that. Of course, our efforts on the highest production, like as you have seen the production, in this quarter, the production is much ahead of more than around 10% of it as compared to the same quarter last year. So our effort is more towards that. How can we optimize our production? How can we optimize on our cost? That's the efforts are there. But marketing or, or the pricing, some blips here and there can happen. But I'm repeating it like I've said. If you look at slightly medium terms and longer term, the things are very bullish. Correct, sir. On utilization level, sir, I missed your point, sir. Uh, what are our uh, utilization levels for the H1, sir? So I said, uh, okay, that as compared to the same quarter last year, uh, yeah. this quarter our production is higher by 10%, 9%. 9%. And whereas yeah. the first quarter of last year was also uh, no, I mean, there was no shutdown, there was no, uh, it was only efficiency improvement. Uh, and the hard work by the team, and therefore we have been able to increase the production. And this is a very significant number. You can uh, assume that number, 10%, 9% is a big number. And that is also one of the reasons of this higher uh, profitability in this quarter. Right, sir. Sir, and this inventory change of 60 crore, uh, can, can you bifurcate the same? Uh, how much is equitable towards uh, the, the young business and uh, towards the soda ash? Uh, this one of the time, I don't have a number. Offline, uh, we can give you the number, but uh, broadly, this will be primarily on the Soda side and very little on the on the on the on the spinning side because in spinning, as I said, probably the inventory will uh, will be slightly uh, same level because the cotton inventory has been lower than the last quarter, and so therefore major inventory increase or uh, major raw, uh, working capital inventory increase will be in the Soda side, and that happens primarily because of the raw material. Because any consignment of coal, as you know, that the coal prices has gone up, so any new arrival of a coal uh, will uh, increase the, uh, the inventory uh, on a particular day. But the raw material basket, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you you did not touch upon how is that shaping up, and what uh, I think so some steps were there in the annual for some procurement, long-term contracts for salt also, and also we trying with Russian coal. So how is the raw material basket currently shaping up and what's the thought process going there? Going there? How would that contribute whether to uh, whether we will have incremental margins because of reduction or how is uh, that, uh, that basket shaping up? See, as per our strategy, we always continue to uh, work on the long-term security of the raw material, right? and try to keep an inventory of, uh, of a slightly longer terms so that uh, the, uh, the volatility is less impacted to us. So that we continue to do, right? Now in terms of, uh, currently the, the rental prices are firm only. Of course, some softening has happened uh, in the coal pricing. And like you rightly said, we are also doing some mix up of the resting pool also. And probably that will help us to kind of a, neutralize the increase which is happening in the, in the other raw material or in the coal which we are buying from Indonesia. So probably going forward, uh, at least in the third quarter, probably you will see, uh, you will see uh, raw material prices in the range bound only. And just to give you a specific, uh, I think just how my team has worked out, just I was telling you, uh, and I was right on that, uh, the soda is, uh, is primarily has gone up by around 550, and textile is down by one, uh, 180 or 200. So, like I said, now, the major significant increase is primarily because of soda is only, and textile is down. Sir, I didn't get this 550 and 180 number. Can you explain once again? No, see, basically what we are saying is, uh, don't go on the numbers. The increase in the uh, inventory is, is only because of soda. Let's take that way. Okay, and this is the finished soda ash or the, the coal and other uh, inventory in, into it? I mean, I am just no, trying to understand. Yes, sorry sir, please. It main, main increase uh, is in, uh, in uh, what you call, in the raw material, but we have some increase in the, uh, in the, in the inventory. Like, like I just said, 
some sodas uh, sale is lower, and obviously that has increased the uh, sodas inventory as well. Okay, so that that shows the preparation we have. Sir. Ah, sir. Sorry, I didn't get you. Sir, you complete, sir. What I'm saying is that still our sodas inventory is maybe in a few days of inventory. Okay, uh, okay, sir. And sir, la last point is on this merger and acquisition part. Sir, you did spoke that we are in the uh, anvil or looking uh, into merger and acquisition. So, if you could give us some more color uh, on 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 what kind of size segment or any any other thing, what are we trying to uh, convey to, to to your investors in terms of merger and acquisition? The the terminology is used by you, sir. No, per second, we are only giving you that what is the first which we are doing it. Beyond that, unless there is some specific uh, thing in our hand, uh, I don't want to kind of speak on, on, on that. Correct, 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 sir. I'll come in the queue, sir. Uh, I have, uh, I can continue, sir, for two, two more questions. The first on the sodium bicarbonate uh, uh, expansion part, sir. And uh, I think the Greenfield project also, sir. But, sir, if you could throw some more uh, light and uh, on where are we? I think some some hearing was due from in for environment clearance. So, do do we see this project coming up sometime in 2024 for the uh, or calendar year, or it would be uh, it will be commissioned sometime in 2025? So that would give us uh, some uh, some uh, some color. How uh, how are we going to use the the cash uh, uh, going ahead just for this greenfield project? Sir? Second, uh, two things on the, I have already said in my opening remarks that public hearing, which was one of the most critical things for, uh, for uh, the Greenfield project, has been successfully completed. So that's the one step closer to uh, starting the Greenfield project. Second, sodium bicarbonate uh, is already, uh, I have already said that is as per schedule, and uh, by end of this quarter, uh, the project should get completed, and the benefit of that should start in the next quarter. Okay, and for soda ash, there is no further debottlenecking at the site, at our current site. We will always yeah. try to do that, but at this point of time, we are not. Uh, at this point of time, we are not seeing any such kind of anything. Correct, correct, sir. I'll come in the queue, sir. Uh, thank you for uh, all the explanations, sir. And uh, I'll come in the queue, sir. I have one or two more points that there should be people waiting. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A reminder to participants to press star and one to ask a question. Also, to ensure the management is able to answer all queries, kindly restrict your questions to two at a time. We have our next question from the line of Aman Madreja from Augmenta Research Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, my all the questions have been answered. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Giriraj Daga from KM Visaria Family Trust. Please go ahead. Hello, team. Uh, so I have a question related to the Greenfield expansion. So, uh, like we are saying, we are one step closer to the starting the project. Uh, so, what is the timeline? Will you mention that? Okay, what what time frame we can expect the complete EC clearance, and then how much time will it take to build the project? See, our expectation at this point of time, by March 23, uh, the complete environmental clearances should happen. Of course, we'll try for early, but uh, generally this kind of time is being taken. So that's one. And after that, probably two years. So probably by March uh, 25, uh, probably uh, we should see the plant uh, is being set up, that means it's being completed. That is the target we have. Okay, and are we like earlier we had mentioned at some point of time the size is five lakh ton and the cost will be about three thousand crore. Suppose that obviously the world has gone through a sea change and the inflation has picked up. So what will should be a revised number on this? So at this point of the time, uh, we have we are working on that number because a lot of technological changes also we are looking at in the project, keeping the environment uh, uh, angle into it. Because as you know that, uh, and I have said in my opening remark also, the world is moving towards a greener uh, initiative, uh, and therefore the soda expansion is happening more on the on the natural side. Uh, so we are also looking at how do we do the technological change to make it more environment friendly. So these numbers are getting calculated, and hopefully by next quarter 
will be able to be having a better number in our hands okay what is the internal uh, irr estimate like we are working with roughly around uh, we are at 17 17%, 17%. 17%. and at the prices of like obviously current prices are a bit higher so at the no, we are not looking at the prices obviously we are not looking at the prices we are looking at slightly longer term how do we see the business how it has happened in last 30 years uh, how the margin has been there so we are taking a kind of a reasonable number on that okay last question from my side so there was some local media reported that uh, Uh, local people are protesting against this project because they believe it might harm the environment and marine life so your comments there yeah, i think uh, that um, uh, we are already uh, uh, made uh, made in the public hearing we have made to the people to understand that this kind of a business is running in across uh, globe even in the india like our plant itself is running for 35 years and uh, there everything is Uh, it's perfectly okay. Uh, similarly, our competitions are also running the plants in various uh, area of uh, Gujarat, and there is no such impact on the environment. As you know, that everywhere some kind of a uh, concern or some kind of a uh, group which always want to have a uh, different uh, thing, and uh, and therefore I'm I'm sure that uh, nothing to worry on that. Even they have gone to the court. and the court has uh, has uh, given them a kind of a uh, bad remarks if i use the wrong, right word and given a cost to them uh, that they are trying to uh, so i i i'm sure that we got a message what i'm trying to give understood understood so sure, thanks from my side thank you we have a next question from the line of resham jain from dsp investment managers please go ahead yeah so uh, my question is related to your comment uh, related to uh, uh, possible or uh, you are open to looking at in organic uh, acquisition so just to get a sense around that what are the kind of attributes you will look at uh, when you look at uh, um, or when you will be looking at in organic opportunities and also the Uh, size of those opportunities will it uh, because the cash generation which you will be doing uh, now given the balance sheet is almost like closer to uh, zero debt um, how should one look at uh, this opportunity especially on the inorganic side which you mentioned uh, there's some a couple of things i just want to kind of uh, highlight uh, this is uh, our uh, my thought or at this point of a time probably we have to go to the board when the right opportunity comes and uh, some of the thought which we have is one and which is very important it is should be in a chemical space where we have a kind of a synergy that's number one of course product basket expansion we we are looking at second uh, again very important where the capital turnover ratio is slightly better than what we are at this point of a time that's the second thing third is where the growth opportunity sustainable growth opportunity is there that the, the, that is going to be the third uh, opportunity of course we will also look at in that how can we the chemistry as a whole how can we leverage that business in a expanding our chemical uh, chemistry so probably from one level suppose they are in a particular commodity can that parameter or can that technology can be expanded or that parameter can be used for expanding the value creation from that product so these are the couple of things in terms of the size probably 100000 uh, cr kind of a number but if you get the right opportunity and one more thing i think i think uh, i missed that point there the management is also going to be very important uh, for us to what kind of a management how that business is being run by the professionals that those also will be important but of course as you know that uh, your all the risk can may not be fulfilled but if combination of everything if we find an opportunity where the growth opportunity is there where the where we can see that the chemistry value creation can happen probably we will be looking at a thousand to uh, kind of a uh, basket of the products which can add to our uh, growth journey okay fine that's it and uh, so the second question is on uh, energy uh, cost for you this quarter uh, we could see 236 crore power and fuel and uh, obviously there will be some coming from textile business as well but uh, uh, 
um, uh, the, you mentioned that uh, this number will be stable in 3Q as well. Is that a right understanding? See, uh, honestly, uh, this number could be slightly here and there uh, because of the inventory adjustment. Sometimes the inventory of the old value, which can be kind of a, uh, which can uh, change uh, in the next quarter. So that kind of a number will be there. But if I look at on a life-like basis, I would say that the pricing of the raw metal is slightly softened in this quarter. So barring the inventory adjustment, the price or the cost of the product, uh, things will be uh, slightly cheaper in this quarter, also Q3. Okay, Q3, uh, price of the uh, final product, uh, manufactured product will be slightly cheaper than 2Q. Subject to only the inventory adjustment. If some inventories are there, which is in high value or, or low value, yeah, that yeah, adjustment yeah. could be there. Okay, okay. And hence, this uh, comment related to uh, softening of prices like one is obviously uh, uh, a realization may come down but on the other side cost is also coming down so uh, is this how one should read it or is there uh, a kind of overall uh, margins which we have been doing over the last few quarters that itself you see uh, 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 like uh, coming to normalized levels how should one think about it I don't know what normalization level you are talking about. Normalization level is, uh, is a different number. But uh, if you look at that compared to the first, uh, second quarter, uh, which you have seen, like quarter one, the margin in the second quarter was higher. Correct. So probably the margin in the third quarter could be slightly lower than the quarter two. But if you say okay. normalization, this still margin will be much better than uh, probably uh, uh, what has been a normal uh, margin. Okay, but got it. Scenario, uh, Resham, I want to make it very clear. This scenario is today we are reading this scenario. After 15 right. years, scenario can be changed because of the Chinese situation. Maybe uh, if uh, China scenario changes, this number could be better than the, uh, the second quarter also. It all depends on uh, how the things uh, happen in China. Understood, sir. So the last part of my question is uh, the new capacity which is coming up of Tata Chemical. Uh, is also going to ha uh, will be there in second half. So the demand supply situation, when you uh, calculate uh, uh, at your own, um, uh, in, in terms of the overall Indian uh, the supply demand, uh, that also should not have uh, that that will get absorbed. Is what you are saying? Hundred percent, because you see, I, I, let me give you the number. If I look at it in the short term, the demand growth in India this year should not be less than 6 to 7 percent. Okay. Six months number, which is a broad number which I know, probably the demand growth in this six months is around 6 percent. Okay. For that, you apply two and a half lakh tons of extra requirement. Got it, sir. And okay. second is like, Still, there is a half a million ton of 600,000 to 700,000 of the imports coming into India. So you have enough opportunity for a new player to come in. There is a new capacity coming uh, into the business uh, to make it a more domestic-based supply line. Okay. Understood, sir. Uh, thank you very much and all the best. Thank you, Rishan. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and congrats on a good set of numbers. Uh, so first question is, you just talked about uh, the imports. So in the last quarter, how the imports and exports have panned out uh, from India and even for uh, our company? Thank you. The overall import, if you look at from a normal level, the import uh, in this quarter has also been lower than the normal level. But if you compare as compared to the last quarter of Q1, it is higher. And this kind of a change will always happen. And this change is what I've just said, the number is slightly on the higher side, is primarily the middle coming in from China. Right, so got Outside it. In China, the entire world is very, very firm. And this is a unique situation. The entire world is tight, except China. 
Right, so got it. Uh, so second question is you talked about the World Soda Ash Conference. So from environmental perspective or carbon dioxide emissions perspective, were there any thoughts uh, which were you know spoken about and which could be probably beneficial from uh, soda ash pricing perspective on a prospective or future basis? Thank you. You know, uh, like you rightly said, uh, Zohit, uh, there were a lot of talk on the environmental or the carbon footprint, and uh, the entire world is focused on how to minimize uh, the carbon footprint. So a lot of a uh, lot of thought has come in, and there also we also noted some of the thoughts. That's why I said in the new greenfield budget which we are talking about, we are trying to capture those thoughts into our new greenfield budget. And uh, our initiative, even in the existing plant also, as you know, there are a lot of initiatives we are doing on, even on the, some of the initiatives uh, on how to reduce the carbon footprint into the domestic, uh, into the existing plant as well. Because this is going to be very important uh, in the going forward. And we are consciously working on that. Right, sir. Got it. Uh, sir, uh, just uh, one uh, last question. Uh, what was the... Uh, Quarter ending debt on uh, soda ash and textiles uh, separately. Just the numbers. Thank you. I'll just give you the numbers. Total uh, figure was 400 for soda ash and 90 was for uh, for uh, textiles. And like I said, we had a uh, cash on the balance sheet. If I reduce that number, uh, the net uh, debt will be only 230 crore. Right, sir. Got it. Uh, thanks a lot and the best of luck, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly restrict your questions to two at a time. We have our next question from the line of Vignesh Ayer from Sequent Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations, sir, on um, good set of numbers. Uh, I, I want to uh, ask about this one uh, conference. Uh, you know, GHC and I participated in a conference during the Aryan. Uh, IM capital after the Q4 uh, numbers were declared. The two points were mentioned. I just wanted to know what is the progress on that part. One was uh, there was some um, uh, capex on salt project for, uh, of around 100 crores, I guess, uh, to help in improvement of raw material or something. Can you, uh, you know, explain, uh, help me understanding what it was exactly and what is the progress on, on that front? Uh, Vignesh, there is a very good question uh, on this uh, from your side. And that, uh, that project is progressing very well and that will definitely add a big bottom line to us. We are looking at expanding uh, or we say productivity increase in the same uh, portion of land and expanding the uh, 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 salt production from the same uh, almost uh, more than uh, 100%. That is what our dream is. That may take two, three years of time. But that will have a big bottom line uh, impact on our uh, and into our business, and that is progressing very well. Hopefully, some results of that will be seen in the 2024 also. Okay, so uh, so it, it is expected to take effect from probably quarter one of next year also, right? Yes. Uh, basically, what happens? You know that the salt uh, production starts uh, in somewhere in the March, uh, February, March. So probably, and uh, so therefore, some impact in the February March can happen, but the major impact will happen next uh, next year, uh, quarter one of next year, and probably the full impact will take two three years of time. But it's a very big, uh, uh, very uh, profitable, or I would say, uh, big uh, initiative, and that will add a big significant amount to our bottom line. Okay. Sir, another point you had made actually in the same uh, conference. Uh, one was uh, where you were looking to a you know, downstream part for a chlorine-based derivative, which was uh, which was uh, supposed to be an import substitute, and another product which was not related to your current chemistry. Can you comment on it? Whether it's still in the drawing board or uh, has it progressed, or you have not decided to go ahead with anything else? So, business, that that project is still on the uh, on the on the uh, on our uh, thought process, and that will link with the because this is linked with the caustic and chlorine put together, right? Right. Caustic, right. and on the other side, chlorine and chlorine derivatives from there. That project right. is very much on the thing, uh, on the thing, and probably this project also we will be setting up the same uh, greenfield project where we are putting the soda ash plant. But this may take some uh, period of time. Probably that could see a kind of a 
uh, implementation or, or the, the thing. But that thought is still there on the line. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, sir, just to, uh, uh, to understand this, uh, there is a 60,000 uh, metric tons added on sodium bicarb, right? Uh, can you just give me what would be a ballpark figure would do on what would be the SK scenario of, you know, revenue realization from this uh, capacity? See, so, uh, sodium bicarbonate, we have realization of the percentage almost at the same price as the soda is. Okay. okay. So whatever the extra volume is there, that uh, probably you can you can simply do the calculation. Of course, it all depends on how that capacity gets absorbed, how much time it, uh, that takes to absorb that volume into the market. Oh, okay. I got it. I got it. That's the last question from my side. Yeah, I'll you to come back in the queue. Okay. Thank you. Can you restrict your questions to two at a time? We have our next question from the line of Mohan Khanna from Banyan Capital Advisors LLP. Please go ahead. Right. Uh, thank you so much sir, uh, for taking my question. I have a question regarding the financing of the Greenfield project. Now they are coming closer. Uh, they are coming closer to that part. Uh, what is the thought process on financing that 3,000 crores of uh, capex? And then what could be the size range of the acquisition that you might like you to do? What is the thought process on that? The size of, of acquisition I've already mentioned in the earlier question. Uh, it could be in the range of around 1,000 crores. In terms of your question on the how are we going to finance, as I have mentioned that we are on a cash uh, surplus situation we are likely to be by a year end. And uh, probably we will have some, uh, uh, at least we have a two years or three years of time frame. Uh, to fully implement uh, the capex of uh, the Intel project. By the time we will have enough uh, cash generation out of uh, out of our current operation, and probably that will help. And still, uh, some debt will be required, which we have done the working, uh, uh, which will be absolutely much below than one into one into one uh, debt to equity ratio. Maybe even not uh, such even one, uh, half one to one point five. I mean, uh, it will not be more than five is to one, five is to one. So that kind of so in terms of the financing, uh, I don't we don't see any any reason or any concern of leveraging the balance sheet. It will be a uh, balance will always be deleveraged. Fair enough. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of S Ramesh from Nirmal Bang Equities. Please go ahead. So uh, thank you very much and uh, congratulations on the good results. So if you're looking at your greenfield capex in terms of your own internal evaluation, can you share your thoughts on what is the kind of ROC you expect from this and what is the kind of underlying uh, EBITDA margin per ton in dollars per ton you're assuming for soda ash? See, Ramesh, uh, I just want to, I've already given the indication of uh, uh, what you call IRR on that, uh, on that project or the greenfield project. And, but let me tell you one more thing, which is very important to kind of it for for soda business. This project has to be seen in slightly longer terms, uh, because uh, here the capital turnover ratio, as you know, that capital turnover ratio is uh, is unfavorable on the soda. But these projects are meant for maybe maybe more than 100 years, and therefore, uh, in terms of uh, economics. IRR is a very good indicative number of 17%, which is again a very good number. But in addition to that also, it is also important to see that how the company wants to go forward and this kind of investment, how important this, uh, uh, this kind of investment for the growth of the business. And the last point on this, this greenfield project is going to bring a continuous growth into the soda business by GSCL because we have a capability of building 2 million tons of the capacity here. In addition to, if you want to have a other basket, like I just said, caustic, chlorine, and things like that. So at this time, point of time, we are only talking about half a million ton. After that, the brownfield benefit, like you have seen in the brownfield expansion, benefiting to the current location, which has given a huge advantage to us in terms of the return ratio. So that will also happen in, uh, in this business, uh, in this new greenfield project. So for your IRR estimate, is it possible to share what is the underlying EBITDA per ton assumption because that's possibly going to drive your cash flows. So I just want to get a sense in terms of where you see the long-term EBITDA per ton settling for the soda ash industry. At this point of the time, difficult to share that number. Okay. 
So in terms of the current pricing uh, for Sodayak, uh, what is the kind of pricing you are getting now and where do you see the prices moving going forward? See, uh, right now the pricing, again, uh, prices, uh, it's difficult to share that uh, pricing pattern, uh, but I can just, uh, like just now I, what I said, uh, that uh, pricing softening, some uh, short term price softening can happen, but in the longer term we are not seeing any, uh, any drop in the pricing. Rather, prices can be slightly uh, better from here because the kind of a capex, of the kind of a growth we are seeing in the business, where the new capitalities are not coming in, like just now I said in my opening remarks, next two years, uh, two three years, we are not seeing any new capacity coming, where the demand will continue to grow. So therefore, definitely the demand the supply situation will will be uh, slightly in favor of the supply, and that will uh, push the prices. So if I can squeeze in one last thought. Nice. I request you to come back in the queue. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Rohit Sinha from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the follow-up. Uh, so one question on the uh, overall CAPEX side, uh, CAPEX number for FY23 and 24. And uh, secondly, uh, on, on the margin side uh, for the uh, for the inorganic uh, chemical, uh, as we we have scaled our margin profile significantly in last uh, two years uh, uh, in the segment, uh, with the with the sodium bicarb being added and uh, having a higher margin as compared to the soda ash, and we are talking about the higher cost uh, scenario. So taking into all these account, uh, just wanted to understand what kind of uh, uh, margin. Uh, we could easily be uh, comfortable with. See, Rohit, uh, like I said, uh, small blip, uh, maybe two, three, or two, four. Barring that, in the long run, uh, this kind of a margin should be sustainable. Okay. Now, in terms okay. of the specific number, uh, I don't have a specific number at this point of the time, and it will be kind of a, uh, difficult to at this point of the time to speak that specific number. Okay, okay. And, and sir, uh, on the CAPEX number for 23 and 24? Uh, so, one more thing I would just like to uh, add here, which you can see in our presentation, which we have said. We have given a so soda as dynamics. Look at that uh, number, probably that will give you a sense of, if you look at it in slightly longer terms, how does the margin has been moving in the last, uh, I would say, 11, 12 years? Okay. Very consistent margin. Barring the 21-22, which you are getting uh, COVID impact, you'll see the very, very consistent margins uh, in the range of around 34-35% kind of a margin. So at this point of the time, margin of, is not a very significantly different than the margin, maybe a few percent, 4-5% percent here and there. But otherwise, you won't see any, uh, though you people are seeing that these margins are very high, but no, this kind of business is required that kind of a margin. Got it, sir. I would request you please uh, see our presentation, uh, the slide number which I have, uh, slide Thank number which I have said is 18 to 18. See that where you need a good sense of how the, uh, the margins are slightly longer terms or medium terms you, you could visualize. Okay, sir. Okay. And, and sir, on the CAPEX number for 23 and 24? See, CAPEX number broadly in the uh, year 23 will be roughly around 800. Uh, no, 360. 360 crores uh, will be the total number, okay, uh, roughly 360 to 370 crores, and out of that, primarily it will be more on textile side, and some will be in the soda side. Out of that, almost 50% we have already spent, and 50% is likely to be spent in the next six months. 23, 24, probably the figure could be in the range of around 800 to 1,000 crores. Out of that, probably 500 to 700 crores will be in the new Greenfield project. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would now like to hand over the call to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, like I have always been uh, saying, uh, uh, which is important for us, as a management, our focus will always be to create or to do the best performance, and our endeavor will continue to do that. Uh, either it's a cost of efficiency improvement or it's a cost of a growth uh, of the business or looking at a new opportunity of a growth. 
and we'll continue to do that. And of course, uh, the, uh, the support or the, the question which you are, uh, you are asking us on this investors uh, call definitely helps us uh, to bring a new perspective to our, uh, in our thought process. And we always take this feedback and, uh, and try to work on the feedback to create a better value for our uh, shoulders. So creating a uh, higher value for our stakeholders is the only objective which we are, as a, as a management, we are working in GSCS. Thank you. On behalf of MK Global Financial Services, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. The conference is no longer being recorded.